What do you mean you're not going to serve me? Well, that's racist. Time to find out Come if the Spellbounder's wand is worth the price I paid. Oh, yeah. How about me a chew up? Beanie weenies! Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the... I'm tired of saying that. You know where you are. You know who I am. Let's get on right to the video. Go to Patreon and support us. Go to StarWarsJunk.net and buy t-shirts. Bam. Over. Now let's get on to the video. What am I going to talk about today? Well, I'm not going to talk Star Wars, sadly. And I'm not even going to talk toys. I was sitting around not really doing anything. And I started looking at this list of 10 television shows as a kid from the 80s that people don't remember. And I started going through the list and going through the list. Don't you hate this? You find a list on the internet of forgotten TV shows and about eight to ten of them you know or you didn't forget you hear about them all the time I mean nobody has forgotten about the Smurfs why would you put the Smurfs or Fraggle Rock on a forgotten TV shows of the 80s but then I started thinking about well, what are some shows I grew up on and I thought about a bunch of different kind of shows and I said well I've talked about a lot of these shows like Dungeons and Dragons Pac-Man cartoon a lot of stuff I already talked about but then I thought I'll go a little farther what about when I was a kid? What was out there on TV that I was a kid that I completely forgot about? So, I started racking my brain. <sighs> think, 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 think! And I came up with a list of 10 shows I watched as a kid. And most of these shows are going to be when I was little, like under 10. Really, kid TV shows. Not stuff I watched in my later teen years or maybe pre-teen years. We're talking maybe five or six, but I'll get into a little bit of older shows also. First up, when I was making this list, I came up with about 20 shows and I said, I've got to cut this down to 10, although it's not really a best of, it's just 10 shows I wanted to talk about. So before we get started, here are some shows that didn't make the list. Hopefully you'll remember some of these because I'm sure you did. I found that some of these might have been too popular to talk to or they just didn't fit into my list. So let's take a look at the ones that almost made it. Let's see, cut it out, uh, cut it out, uh, okay, arr, arr. Meow, meow, oh! Ghost be sent, ghost be sent. Spot me! What? You know how to use your picture page? No, the teen voice is zooming out the... A hanker for a hunk of cheese! Yeah! So I got the top ten list, and I started doing them in kind of order I liked them, or I started doing them kind of in order that I liked them, and I thought... Let's not do it like that. I'm going to start with my earliest shows I remember and work my way up till I'm a little older. This list is going to start in the early 70s and actually going to go up until the beginning of the 90s. Let's start off with number one. Everyone remembers this show. I know I said I was going to try to do a list of shows that people didn't remember, but I had to start here, and that's Captain Kangaroo. I loved Captain Kangaroo. I mean, you just don't understand. In fact, my favorite on the show was Mr. Green Jeans. Oh, I did like the Moose Man pretty much also. I don't know why I called him Moose Man. He wasn't a Moose Man. He was just a moose. And when the ping pongs dropped on Captain Kangaroo's head, whew, had to be the funniest shit in the world. I can remember I was real little. I was probably in kindergarten. On days that I was sick, I would go to my grandparents' house. And about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, they would run Captain Kangaroo. I mean, it was the greatest thing ever. Not only was I not at school or kindergarten, I was at my grandma's house where I kept all my vintage Star Wars figures. Although we didn't call them vintage Star Wars figures then. We just called them Star Wars figures. Anyway, I was there, kind of sick, or maybe it was summertime. So I got to see Captain Kangaroo. And then when that went off, I got to play Star Wars. But I have fond memories of Captain Kangaroo. And it's something about Captain Kangaroo's voice. To this day, it still just kind of soothes me. It's got one of the best voices ever. Well, I hope you enjoyed our fun today. And I hope that you'll look for more Captain Kangaroo adventures. There are so many. And one of the best segments of the show I used to love is when they used to do drawings. Well, you know my name is Simon Burns, the things I draw come true. Remember Mike Myers on Saturday Night Live? I think he did a character based on this also. It was just weird. But we're starting this list off with a show I'm sure you remember, Captain Kangaroo. It's a place where there's water. And a motorboat! And a very big pussy! That's what she said! <laughs> and after Captain Kangaroo's number two, one that, man, I forgot all about until probably a few years ago when I found a blooper of it on YouTube. 
It's a show called New Zoo Review. Whew, that took me like five takes to get out. But I don't know if anybody remembers this show. It had a huge, big old puppet frog and an owl. And I can't tell you anything about it. I can't tell you what it's about. I guess I could have Googled it and Wikipedia it and looked it up. But what's the fun in that, right? Well, I research. You're here to watch me try to talk about something I don't remember. And I don't remember it. All I can remember is that hippopotamus. I think it was a hippopotamus or a pig. It had the hugest nostrils ever. I mean, their nostrils were like this. And it was the creepiest shit I'd ever seen. I know it was a kid's show, but man, it freaked me the hell out watching this thing. And I think that's why I didn't even remember it for years later. I think I kind of blocked it out. Ooh, give me chills just thinking about it. And now we'll move on to another puppet show, Less is Creepy. And I would love if somebody else to know this show, because I don't talk to anybody hardly that remembers it. But people must remember it, because there's a reference to it on South Park. It was on PBS, and it was a puppet show about safety called the Clyde Frog Show. And boy was it cheap. I bet this show here has more production value than the Clyde Frog Show. The background was all black and you could see the strings and the sticks or whatever on the puppets. No sign of the dangerous kidnapper who escaped from the state penitentiary today. I can't remember what it was about. I remember one time there was a superhero frog on the show. He wore a cape but he looked just like Clyde Frog. So I think they just used the same puppet again or one very close to it. Somebody probably ran in the store right before they started filming the show and bought two puppets. And I could be wrong about this, but I swear there's an old man puppet on the show that turns up years later on Today's Special. That's one that didn't make the list. You remember that? Today's Special? But anyway, this was called the Clyde Frog Show. I remember one time he got hurt on his bicycle, and I remember him talking on the phone. But these are very old memories I have, and I don't hear many people talk about it. Now, I mentioned that it was on South Park. That's right, Eric Cartman had a frog doll called Clyde Frog. I'm not sure if they took that name from this show or it's just kind of some strange coincidence. I couldn't even find this show for years on the Internet Movie Database, but it's on there now. In fact, they even have a Wikipedia page for it. Crazy. Do you remember Clyde Frog? Does anyone out there remember Clyde Frog? Hi, Dad. Clyde. Now, I'm not saying it was a great show, but as a kid, whew, man, I sure did love it. What are you going to do with me, Mr. Kidnapper, sir? Who knows, kid? You got to be pretty stupid to hitchhike. Now, this one here is one of those shows I remember watching all the time during the summer or when I was at home sick. And I'll say three words, and you'll know what it is if you grew up in the 70s. Are you ready? Hey, you guys! Oh man, the electric company was great. And who's on the electric company? Morgan Freeman. That's right, Morgan Freeman got his start on here. I love the electric company. It's kind of like a skit show for kids. I think it was also on PBS. And I'm sure many of you remember the Spider-Man segment. That's right, Spider-Man had his own show during the electric company. It was a live action Spider-Man show. Sure, it was only five, maybe 10 minutes. But it was amazing as a kid to finally see Spider-Man in action. There was a live-action TV series. What's that? They had a live-action series. Oh, yeah. Doug Simpson, the big man on campus, played him. Was that before? I'm not Nicholas Hammond's biographer. Well, okay, we had a Spider-Man TV show, but I think this came out before the TV show. I could be wrong. I was just excited to see a live-action Spider-Man. But the best superhero on the electric company? Hell, the best superhero in the 70s? wasn't Spider-Man, it was someone else on their electric company. And his name was Letterman. Letterman, come on! He dressed like a 1920s football player. He was awesome. It was narrated by Joan Rivers. That's right, the voice of Dot did the narration for Letterman. Now you're asking yourself, what is the Letterman? That doesn't sound like a superhero. Well, let me tell you his superpower. There was some kind of little, I always thought he was some kind of little devil troll, but I guess he was just a little fat human. I don't know what his deal was, but he would go around and find kids doing things and change the spelling of words. Like there was this one kid playing with a ball and he changed the B to a W. Yeah, and that's some So the kid wasn't playing with a ball anymore and he was playing with a wall. 
And we all know it's not fun to play with a wall, especially if you don't have a ball. So what do you do, y'all? You don't want to play with a doll. So I guess you're stuck playing with the wall. Well, Letterman shows up and he always had the right letter on his chest that he needed. So he would rip off the B, throw it over on the W and the wall would disappear and become a ball again. Splitterman save the day. It's Letterman! Hi, I'm Letterman. Now that's a superhero that I would love to see in the Avenger movies. A rubber glove sandwich. Hard to bite, difficult to chew, and impossible to swallow. And now here's another one I probably can't talk that much about, because I'll be completely honest with you. I totally forgot all about this show until I was looking up some other shows and, and I saw a picture of this and I said, what is that? Then I saw Billy Barty and I was like, oh, I remember this. It was about a bunch of teenagers who got shrunk. I don't remember much of the story other than Billy Barty. It, come on, anybody grew up in the 80s know Billy Barty, right? Ignore the bird, follow the river. Anyway, I think he was some kind of mad scientist or he worked with a mad scientist and he shrunk a bunch of kids. Now, I believe this was made by Sid and Mardi Gras, the people that did a bunch of crazy 70s shows. You know, they did that one with that talking flute. What was that called? See, this is why I should write this stuff down before I turn on the camera. What was that called? We had the, what was that called? We had the flute. Now, hold on. H&R Puffin stuff. That was a really strange one, too. But we're talking about Dr. Shrinker. I guess that was the doctor's name on the show. I don't know if that's who Billy Barney played, but man, I'm sure you guys know this show. Like I said, it's made by Sid and Mardi Gras. They did a lot of crazy, wacky, almost like they were on drugs type stuff in the 70s. And I totally, totally forgot all about this. And I wish I remembered more about it, but sadly I don't. I could talk more about it. And I'm lazy. I should have looked it up and wrote down a whole two-page essay on it, but I didn't. But hey. Maybe you remember the show out there, and I don't need to talk about it anyway, right? Now we're up to the late 70s, and it's Star Wars ripoff time. And no one did it better or worse than Jason of Star Command. I was crazy about Jason of Star Command. And this came along at the right time. I was crazy about Star Wars. And I would wake up on Saturday morning and watch the little kid cartoons. And Jason Star Command and Jason Star Command came on probably around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, a bridge between the cartoons, and then about noon they would start doing in the news on CBS. You remember that news program? In today in the news or something. In the news, the bus of the future goes bust. Jason of Star Command. It had Scotty from the original Star Trek on it. It's very cheesy looking, and I tried to go back probably a few years ago and watch some on YouTube, and it's and it's not really easy to watch now. But as a kid, I was crazy about Jason and Star Command. Sure, my brother would always say, Buck Rogers is better. And I was always telling him, You're crazy, Jason and Star Command. He might have been right after all. A space age soldier of fortune determined to stop the most sinister force in the universe. Dragos, master of the cosmos. And now let's go back to PBS. Well, one that used to freak me the out. This was some scary ass. <laughs> now I know I said the nostrils on that pig hippo thing on the new zoo on the new zoo review was bad. This was spooky. And I'm talking about Slim Goodbody. You don't remember Slim Goodbody? Well, here, have you some nightmares. When you were a baby, your body was smaller. Now you've grown bigger and very much taller. Because your body takes food you chew and changes some of it into... Oh, that is so creepy. You can see inside of it, but it's not even that. It's, you can see inside his body, and that's not even the creepy part. It's just how thin he is in that. 70s afro and oh can't even talk about this one even my goosebumps are getting goosebumps and the worst thing is me and my brother would always try to look to see if he had genitalia and then i guess he didn't and we were like well there are no bones inside the genitalia just raised too many questions i 
can't talk about this. Next, next one, next one. No, no. Your amazing brain makes it so. Sure, wished I had one. Now I'm becoming a teenager and I'm on to the Nickelodeon years. And this was hard to talk about. So when you talk about Nickelodeon, what do you talk about? First, you can't do it on television. That was my Saturday Night Live as a preteen or early teenager. Then you had one of my favorites, Lights, Camera, Action. Leonard Nimoy. I know everybody talks about In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. But to me, Leonard Nimoy is the guy for Lights, Camera, Action. Told you all about making movies. They even had a Return of the Jedi special. Yeah, Return of the Jedi. Making them. Man, it was awesome. Uh, what else were there? Out of Control. That was a good one. And then you had that dick, Mr. Wizard. I mean, there was so much on Nickelodeon I could talk about. But I wanted to pull this one out because I don't hear many people talk about it. And this one's called What Will They Think Of Next? It was kind of like a science program where they would, uh, where they would tell you about inventions coming out or new ways. I remember one about a mattress that you slept on. And it has some kind of new air spring thing inside of it. I don't remember much about that show, but I don't remember it was so kind of, I don't remember it was kind of corny and cheesy where they would show these little cartoon animation and a little bubble at the top and the host would appear and tell you all about the new product coming out. Can you believe they made that? What will they think of next? And I remember this guy, he was also the dad on One Day at a Time. No, not Snyder. Apparently they had a dad, but he wasn't on every episode. I don't remember it one day at a time, and I'm kind of glad I don't. But anyway, it was called What Will They Think Of Next? And like kind of kangaroo, I've kind of found this guy's voice kind of smoothing as a child. And then when it went off, I would always ask myself the same thing. What will they think of next? Great title for a show because it left me asking the same question. What will they think of next? Cattlemen all over the world are faced with the same expense. The high cost of getting farm help to feed the cows. And the next one, it was from the 60s, I think, but I didn't discover it until the late 80s. I think it would come on the USA Network. And it was a cartoon called Roger Ramjet. That was a good cartoon right there. It was kind of like that Moose cartoon. Was that Moose's name? Rocky and Bullwinkle? It was kind of like that. And his name was Roger Ramjet. He was a superhero, or I guess he was a superhero. I mean, he flew up around on it in a jet. Roger Ramjet, he's our man, hero of the nation. I remember that. That was kind of like in the theme of Yankee Doodle Dandy. It was that Roger, Rab Roger Rabbit. It was the Roger Ramjet theme song. But it was a silly, short cartoon, and man, I loved watching it. How did you ever think of it? Well, I just figured something like that might work. But how did you know? I just knew, that's all. But how did you think of it? I just did. Must you badger? I want to know. Well, it's none of your business. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? Why, you don't take ask I questions don't like that. And this brings us into the 90s on the last one. And I'll be completely honest with you. I was really too old to be watching this. And my brother's six, seven years older than me. He was really too old to be watching it. But for some reason, man, did we dig it. And it was Dragnet. Wait, no, it wasn't Dragnet. It was Mathnet. Mathnet, frankly. That's right, a parody of Dragnet, the cop show from the 60s, called Mathnet. These two cops will go around and solve crime thanks to math. Now, I don't know why we watch this show so much. Like I said, I was probably in my late teens, and he had to be in his early 20s. For some reason, around 3, 4 o'clock, we didn't have much to do, guys. We didn't have the internet, okay? Don't judge us. We watched Mathnet. It was just so surreal. Now, I didn't know this. I did do some research. Apparently, MathNet was just part of another kids' TV show on PBS called Square One. I don't remember that. Not at all. Somehow, I remember MathNet, but I don't remember any other part of this so-called Square One TV or whatever it was called. Now, I think they must have ended the show with MathNet. And it must have came on around 2.30 because my mom had the VCR set to record the guiding light at 3 o'clock every day. And I remember the timer would come on about five minutes early. And we wouldn't get to see the end of MathNet. So we would have to cut that timer off and try to remember to record the guiding light. Oh, man, it was hell. It was hell if you forgot to record the guiding light and, your mom got, and my mom got home and she didn't have her stories on tape. But I couldn't blame her. I mean, I wanted to see what Roger Thorpe was going to do also. I wanted to see if Reaver and Josh was going to get back together. 
I wanted to see if Alan Spaulding was going to take over Lewis Oil and Lou Jack. Was Lou Jack really dead? What about Beth? Is she really pregnant with Rick's child? What's Philip going to do? Macau, sorry, he didn't call up on Guy and Light. Maybe I should make a video about Guy and Light. That's the stupidest idea ever. Thanks, you're right, I shouldn't do that. Anyway, math net. It was weird. Our gorilla was spotted at 10.05. He was picking oranges in the backyard of a house on Scenic Drive in that new project. But that's a look at 10 shows I remember growing up. Again, I wanted to try to stay away from really famous shows that you probably all know. But I'm hoping a lot of you do know these shows. And I'm hoping you watched them too. But let me know in the comments below. Please, let me know some shows you grew up on that maybe everybody forgot about. And let me know if you watched the Clyde Frog Show. I can't be the only one that remembers this show. But anyway, I want to thank you again for watching. Please, please support us at Patreon. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, I really don't know how to end this video. So I'll just say go to... Oh. Yeah.